My name is Alan Girelli, and uh, I am the director of the Center for Innovation and Excellence in E-Learning, which is now in partnership with the United States Distance Learning Association, and our first event together is this event, and it has been such a pleasure to work with the USDLA. Um, the event, of course, is the sustainability of MOOCs in higher education. We have a very, very uh, gifted group of panelists and tremendous keynotes. And I want to welcome you all and thank you all for coming and then turn it over very quickly to the Dean of the College of Applied and Professional Studies of Advanced and Professional Studies. Phil DeSalvio. I'm going to get it right. It took us a long time to get that name. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, welcome to the Sustainability of MOOCs in Higher Education Forum. I, I welcome you on behalf of UMass Boston. I welcome our keynote speakers, Anand Agarwal and Anish Sanawakar. Um, I welcome our distinguished panelists, Eric Cater, Andy Paulo, John Flores, Apostolos Kutopoulos from UMass Boston, and Dennis Maxey from UMass Boston, too. And as Alan said, this event is co-sponsored not only by the Center for Innovation and Excellence in E-Learning through the College of Advancing and Professional Studies, um, and, uh, but the United States Distance Learning Association, and I hope we continue to have collaborations over the years. Um, I, I just want to say a couple of words about this um, to welcome you. You all have an interest in MOOCs. Um, the New York Times calls 2012 the year of the MOOC. So it must be right. It's the New York Times. Um, but I have an even better, more reliable source, and that source is an article that says, I like to call this the year of disruption. Um, and he goes on to say, and the year is not over yet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, some have observed that MOOCs have been around for a few years as a collaborative learning event, uh, but, but apparently everyone wants in. Uh, we see MOOCs as opening up new solutions. We see MOOCs as a step towards other kinds of learning. We see MOOCs as opportunities to explore new educational spaces and bring and engage new learners in. We see MOOCs earning praise for bringing outstanding teaching to multitudes of students who otherwise wouldn't have that access. But I, I point you to other aspects of MOOCs that I think you'll hear a lot about today. MOOCs offer a huge opportunity to investigate how we use technology more effectively to educate students. Um, they could serve potentially as laboratories. They have the potential to tell us how student learning can be optimized, um, what the best role of faculty members might be in such an environment. And again, I refer you to Dr. Argawal and his colleagues when they say they're just starting to amass huge bodies of data <coughs> from these MOOCs to analyze this data and to use this data in a systematic way. I think you're going to hear today that MOOCs can really be a tool for educational research as much as a digital teaching platform. So uh, the future clearly points to the sustainability of the ongoing existence of universal access to free, high quality, impeccably branded online courses. I think many agree that MOOCs are here to stay. Not replacing higher ed, but helping to transform it. And as all this rushes at us at laser speed, there are many interesting questions that remain. And those questions, I think, point to acknowledging the challenges we face in this brave new world of, of MOOCs, and perhaps even re reconsidering old assumptions about teaching and learning. And this afternoon is about that, reflecting on the sustainability of MOOCs. 
Uh, and when we talk about sustainability, we talk about it in a general sense. The capacity, the, the capacity to support, to maintain, to endure. And I think history might tell us a little bit about the sustainability of MOOCs, but even more, I think our keynote speakers and our distinguished panelists are going to help us reflect on this this afternoon. I saw a quote the other day, and I thought of our interest in this field. And I think it refers to our discussion today. The quote goes, never before in history has innovation offered promise of so much to so many in so short a time. So I again welcome you to the forum. I know you'll find this uh, an interesting and informative afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. into our keynotes, um, I want, I want to uh, highlight one thing that Dean DeSalvio said, that everybody wants in in the MOOC game. And I have a couple of announcements about UMass Boston being in the MOOC game. Uh, on March 10, the University of Massachusetts Physics Department and the Center of Innovation for Excellence in E-Learning will be launching UMass Boston's first MOOC titled Molecular Dynamics. It will be taught by none other than Nishikant Sonwalker, one of our keynote speakers. And he will be the lead professor of this MOOC, which will involve faculty throughout our physics department. Molecular dynamics is a topic that we chose because it is a field of computational science that's grown in uh, importance throughout the state at the same time that experimentation has become more costly and more complex while the industries in the Commonwealth are demanding people with the skill, and we are going to help meet that need while offering this as an open course to people throughout the world. Even more explicitly, this MOOC will be the first adaptive MOOC in the field. Um, we're going to hear more from Nish about that. Um, I'll also make a second announcement about our second MOOC which will be titled Coasts and Communities. This will be a five-week MOOC launched in June of 2013, and it will be offered in partnership between the Center for Innovation and Excellence in E-Learning and the new University of Massachusetts Boston School for the Environment, which is being directed by Robin Hannigan and has as its associate director Anna Mariah Frankick. Um, Robin, I believe you're here. I don't know where you're. There's Robin right there, and there's Anna Maria. Um, this second book will be taught, uh, will be uh, posted in course sites, which you may know is the public face of Blackboard Learn 9. And Sarah Bishop Root from Course Sites is with us. Where are you, Sarah? Can you stand up? So I know Robin needs to leave. Anna Marie, I believe, will be with us for some time. And I know Sarah will be here. Uh, so after this event, if you want to pull them aside at the reception and get more information about that, that would be terrific. Anish, would you rather talk about your MOOC uh, now, or do you want to make that part of your MOOC? All right, so he's going to incorporate that. So now I'm going to introduce our tremendous keynote speakers. Nishikant Sanwalker is a leading thinker in advanced scientific visualization, computational science being among that area. Uh, he is also the founder of Synaptic Global Learning and is also now on faculty here in the physics department. Uh, his credentials speak for themselves and they're a lot more lofty than uh, I'm able to give them time, but I urge you to read that fully. Uh, when Anand's done, he's going to move right on and introduce Anand Agarwal, who is president of edX and a founder of online initiatives at MIT uh, and a great thinker of our time and one of the leading speakers on MOOCs. 
And so if you would, Nish, why don't you come on up and take it away? Hmm.